Hello, this is Lisa Mathena from the Lisa Mathena Group Real Estate Firm with another episode of my cooking show. Uh, we've done homemade ravioli and we've done chicken cutlet. Today we're going to be doing meatballs in sauce and or gravy, whatever you like to call it. Um, as a kid growing up, my parents every Sunday used to have a pot of spaghetti sauce or gravy. A big controversy over that um, as to what you call it, but we call it gravy because we put meat in it. So it would either have meatballs and sausage or possibly pork. You could put pork chops in it. You could put chicken in it. But the basic sauce is what I'm going to show you how to make tonight. And I'm also going to show you how to make meatballs. So I like to use meatloaf mix for my meatballs instead of just plain beef. It gives it, in my opinion, a better flavor. So to each package of meatloaf mix, which is about a pound and a third each, I'm adding one egg, and then we're also going to have cheese, breadcrumbs, a little bit of half and half, pepper, parsley, basil, onion powder, salt, and that's what's going to go in the meatballs. This onion is for the sauce that we're going to make, uh, and you use the same ingredients in the sauce as you do the meatballs, with the exception of the half and half the breadcrumbs and the cheese. So in other words, you put pepper, salt, parsley, basil, and onion powder in the sauce. Now, a lot of people like to use oregano. They like to use garlic. I prefer not to use either of those, just my preference, but you can add whatever you'd like to the sauce as far as seasoning goes. So the first step in making the sauce is you take the onion and you dice it roughly or largely, not really small pieces. And then you put a little bit of oil in a hot pot and you saute the onions until they get translucent. So we have our diced onions here and here's the pot. There's about probably a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of oil in here, which is nice and hot. And we're gonna put the onions in there. And you have to make sure that you saute them on a lower heat so they don't. So just stir this up a little bit, keep it on low to medium low heat, and it will start to cook. And when the onions are translucent, is when you add the uh, tomato product. So here we are with the onions, they're ready to have things added to them. You see they're translucent. And over here, I want to show you the difference in the different types of tomato products. So here's the diced tomatoes. You see how liquidy they are? And then the crushed tomatoes too are not as liquidy, but still liquidy. And then we have the puree, which is much more uh, thick. So let me add these in here. You just pour it right in. So you don't need to add any water, like I said, with the diced Crushed tomatoes, I usually put a little bit of water in because there's a lot of product left in the can. So that helps get some of the, some of the rest of the remaining ingredients in there. And then we put the puree in. So if I was making a smaller pot of sauce or gravy, as the case may be, I would not use as many cans of um, tomato puree or, or diced tomatoes. So we have all the cans in here mixed up pretty well. You can see the onions in there and you can see the crushed and the diced tomatoes. So to that we're going to add the spices. This is basil, and for a pot this large, which is five cans, I'd say it's about two tablespoons of basil. I'll add a little bit more just to be on the safe side. We're gonna put the parsley in next. It's about the same amount as the basil, probably about two to three tablespoons. Remember, this is five cans of tomato product. Pepper. I'd say it's about a tablespoon of pepper, salt, 
say about two tablespoons of salt and onion powder probably about a tablespoon onion powder and then just mix that up and that's the base this, this is like the marinara sauce so there's no meat in here the only thing that's in here are the tomato products onion parsley basil salt pepper and onion powder now we already have onions in here so you don't always have to add onion powder but i just put a little extra in because i like the taste of onion so now we're going to make the meatballs so here's our meatloaf mix the three eggs which is one egg per one pound and a third of meatloaf mix. This is about a cup of Progresso Italian breadcrumbs. I like Progresso, but you can use any Italian breadcrumbs that you like. This is about a half a cup of grated Parmesan or Romano mixed. You can use either Parmesan or Romano or a mixture. And then we have the pepper, basil, onion powder, salt, parsley, and half and half, which you may be surprised about putting half and half in meatballs, but it does help make them not quite so dense and it really gives them a, a deep, deeper flavor. So let's put the eggs in. And you should all know that you never crack your egg over what you're putting it in to make sure that you don't get any egg into the product. And of course I just did, <laughs> but I took it out. We'll add the cheese. We'll add the breadcrumbs. All right, so this is the parsley. There's already parsley in the breadcrumbs, but I'm gonna add a little bit more. So we're gonna add about two tablespoons of parsley, about two tablespoons of basil, about a tablespoon, well, not quite a tablespoon of black pepper. It's probably about a teaspoon and a half, I would say. About a teaspoon of onion powder. And about two teaspoons of salt. I'm also going to add some half and half. And how much half and half you add will be dictated by the thickness or denseness of the meat as you're massaging it and mixing everything in. So for right now, I'm going to pour about a quarter of a cup in there. And then what you do is you just, you got to get your hands in there and you just start kneading. So when you're a cook, you sometimes have to be adaptable. <laughs> and that is the case here. I had to switch pots. I had too much in the other pot and it wouldn't fit all the meat. So here is our sauce and it is marinara sauce right now. The key to a really good spaghetti sauce or spaghetti gravy is cooking it a long time, low and slow. Some people like it a little thinner, some people like it a little thicker, but when you cook it, if you want to, want to thicken it up a little bit, you take the lid off and let it evaporate as it cooks. If you want to keep the same consistency, you leave the lid on. So we are getting ready to put the meatballs in. You can make the meatballs a couple of different ways. You can actually fry them in a frying pan you could put them on a cookie sheet in the oven and bake them at about 225 to 250 degrees, about 15 minutes on each side. They're really good. They get a little crust on them like they do when they're fried um, and they have a very good taste. However, today what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cook them in the sauce. So I'm gonna roll these meatballs by hand, put them in the sauce and cook them. In the sauce, as long as it's simmering well, it'll take about an hour to fully cook the meatballs and you can eat them at any time. But like I said, the longer you cook the sauce, the better. So if you're gonna make sauce, you should do it, start it in the morning, if you can, as long as you're home, and let it cook as long as you can. Once it's cooked, then what I do is I put them in uh, dinner size containers, some sauce, some meatballs, or whatever meat I choose to put in here, and freeze it. That way, I have my own homemade sauce, my own homemade meatballs, and when you come home from work, instead of opening up a jar of sauce that some company made, you have your own homemade sauce and meatballs. So what you do is, 
It depends on what size you want the meatball. And by the way, I did add a little bit more half and half to this. It was not quite um, moist enough, so I added about another quarter to a third of a cup of half and half. Now, I know I'm making a large pot. I'm making uh, about four pounds of meat here. Just cut the recipe down to meat, whatever size meatballs you're gonna make, however much meat you're gonna do. So if you're gonna make two pounds, then just cut the recipe in half. Same thing with the, um, the sauce here. I used five cans of tomato product. If you only use three cans of tomato product, then cut it down, not quite in half. So you take the meat, and you see it's actually not real dense. It's, it's the, the milk really, the half and half really helps to, to make it um, softer, so to speak. I like larger meatballs. You can make them whatever size you want. Just put them right in the sauce. So you take it. Roll it in your hand. There it is. And you just literally put it right in the sauce. And you keep doing that to use up all your meat. We are at the end of our cooking process, but I wanted to show you, come take a look. When you cook the meat in the sauce, you're gonna get some grease from the fat in the beef. So you have to skim that off. You just take your ladle and barely dip it in there. And you can tell where the grease is by the color of it. I've skimmed this off already, so there's really not a whole lot left. Um, and that's pretty good, actually. So this has been cooking for about six or seven hours. It was a big pot. If you do it on a smaller scale, it's not going to take as long. But you see it's thickened up here. If you want it to continue to thicken up, um, you can. Just keep cooking it. So let's see what the outcome of our toils will deliver us. So the meatball is, it's not hard. It's actually uh, pretty malleable. And there it is inside. It's fully cooked and ready to eat. So this is Lisa Mathena from the Lisa Mathena Group Real Estate Firm and my other passion, cooking. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, your family will love it. Have a great day.